Welcome to Chamo Designs. I'm super excited about today's video. So I'm going to be showing you how I took an item that's intended for something else and turned it into something super unique. Please keep watching as I show you how I take a placemat that I bought at Home Goods over a year ago and turned it into a unique and fabulous clutch that I can use day or night. Thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more videos. Here are our materials. We've got our placemat, thread, measuring tape, magnetic snaps, and fabric scissors. And now we're going to take all of these and turn this placemat into an awesome clutch. All right guys, so here's our placemat. Mine measures approximately 13 inches across by 19 inches in length. And all I've done is basically uh, grab the placemat and have folded it into just different positions until I found the image that I loved the best. And for me, it was definitely this one with the flower and the monstera leaf, and I loved how bright and colorful it is. I know that it reads a little, you know, comes off a little dark on camera, but it's super bright and bold colors, and I love that. So, and I didn't want to lose that. So, with that being said, just taking the bottom flap over by like two inches, folding it in, and taking it to the top, what I could do is I could close this up, you know, like an envelope closure, and just add like a fabulous button or something there but I didn't want to lose my flower here in the front. So instead I decided, well, why not just take this back flap piece, fold it over again, about two inches and having the two meet up. See, check that out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch on each side. I'm gonna follow the stitch lines that are already there and except that I might do them in like, I don't know, like a bright color or something, you know, to add just an extra little pop of color, I guess. And then on the inside to close it, I'm going to attach two snaps here to the front of the back, making sure that it doesn't come out to the outside because we don't want to show that. And then same thing with the back piece. We're going to add two snaps here, but only through here, you know, not to the very back of the bag. And the added bonus is that not only do I get a fabulous bag in the front, if I flip over my placemat, I get an amazing back of the bag, which I could still turn into, you know, the front. So basically it's like a two for one. So I'm in love with this placemat. I definitely encourage you to find something like this. You know, it's not a traditional fabric um, per se that you're gonna build from scratch, which I have done. I've made a similar bag like this from scratch. But I, when I found this fabric at Home Goods, I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be amazing and a lot easier. So I definitely encourage you to take, you know, things that you normally wouldn't think of um, and you can still transform them into something useful and practical and beautiful. Okay, so I'm switching over to voiceover mode and that's because your girl here has two young boys and they can get pretty loud. So we're gonna take our placemat, which again is 13 inches across, and then I've decided to fold over my bottom flap about two inches up. And I'm basically gonna be showing you here how I decided to mark, or where to mark my for my magnetic snaps. I'm taking my friction pen. This thing is awesome. Basically the way it works is just like a pen or a marker. But once you make your markings on a fabric, it can easily erase just by setting your iron on it. So you were, you know, you can just go over it with your iron and it'll be nice and hot and it's heat, I guess, sensitive and it just erases for you. So anyways, I've made my markings at three and 10 inches along the bottom and the top. And now I'm gonna take my magnetic snap. This is the female part, the one with the little hole. And then this is the male part. That's the one with the little knob for obvious reasons. So anyways, we snap them together and it does a really pretty good uh, tight shut there, like a, a tight snap together. So I'm just showing you here how we're gonna do the top and the bottom and how once everything is sewn into place, it'll snap together just like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and take just a regular needle and we're gonna thread our fabric through it and do a little knot at the very end. This is so that we can go ahead and hand sew each individual snap um, to our fabric. Now, I know that in the materials list, you may have seen that I was using white thread, but I decided to go ahead and do a neon green because that's like one of my favorite colors. 
And I already figured this bag is super colorful. Why not add just a touch of uh, some neon to it? So what I'm doing here is I'm taking our needle with thread and I started from underneath the fabric. That's the side that you're not gonna see. So it's okay if it looks, you know, not as great because nobody's really gonna see that anyway. It's once we sew the sides together. And what I'm taking is I'm pulling the needle through from the bottom to the top and each magnetic snap has like four little loops two on each side, the top and the bottom. And that's so that it can be attached to your fabric or your garment into place. And so I'm basically doing about six stitches on each little loop. Um, so I guess if you were to count them, that's like what, 24 loops or 24 stitches, you know, uh, of going up and down through your fabric. And I'm pulling off each side nice and tight so that my snap will not move and will not come undone. What you wanna do here is you're gonna take your needle and push it through just the top layer of your fabric. And I'm gonna go through my, uh, the thread there and make a little loop. And this is so that I can go ahead and tie it off. This will secure your stitches, your hand stitches that you're doing so that your item, your button, your magnetic snap, whatever it is that you're stitching together doesn't come undone. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and do the rest of the little loops which are those other three that I'm pointing at. And you're gonna do the same thing to all four sides so that all four magnetic snaps are into place. All right, guys, so now we have our snaps sewn into, uh, sewed into place. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take each corner and we're going to pin it. I've got my pin here and we're gonna pin it. On this one, we're gonna pin from the outside that'll be the easiest way to sew it when we take it to our sewing machine. And we're gonna do the same thing for all four corners. We wanna make sure that we're pinning each flap down because we're gonna be sewing along those stitch lines that you see there with the white thread so that our bag will stay nice and closed. So I'm pinning this through. <clears throat> Again, you just grab any pin that you have. It can be any size as long as it'll hold it together. And this is optional in a way because sometimes I do stuff like this, but I don't pin it. But to show you, um, it is why I'm decided to go, go ahead and pin this. And then I've also decided to add just a little bit of gold accents. I like a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of uniqueness to my products. So that's what I'm pointing out there for you guys. Okay, so I've threaded my machine and I've pulled out my bobbin thread from the bottom. Again, both match. It's that bright, bold neon green that I love. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my placemat and remember I've pinned my four corners and I'm gonna go ahead and sew from about a quarter of an inch from the top down to about where this ends. The reason why I'm doing that is so that our flap stays closed. And again, we won't see that horrible stitching I did down there but we're gonna go ahead and close that up and then once we've done that to all four corners then we will be able to snap it together and sew from the bottom part of where that flap ends and close the sides together it's a pretty thick cotton slash probably polyester blend and i don't want to go through eight layers of fabric and they're all pretty thick and that's the reason why I decided to go ahead and use the heavier gauge needle. It's intended for denim, but I figured, you know, since it's for denim, it should be able to go through at least these two layers, which is essentially four layers of fabric. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do two stitches. I think I will go ahead and do that just so that I follow um, the same stitching pattern that's here. It's a straight stitch. We are gonna go back and forth to, you know, make sure that our stitch stays in place also. All right guys, so we've got our placemat. We're gonna go ahead and lift up our presser foot with the little lever here in the back and we're gonna take our presser foot down, place our needle in place. I've actually just done off camera the outside edge and I'm gonna do the inside edge for you guys. So roll down my needle so that it's aligned with the existing thread of the actual placemat here. And I'm gonna go ahead and slowly stitch and I'm gonna do forward and back. Now we want to do that in sewing so that we can reinforce our thread, our stitching, so that it doesn't unravel and come undone. Only going to sew about an inch and maybe a quarter because again I want to avoid this bulkiness 
um, just because of my machine not being a heavy duty machine I want to avoid it you know getting damaged or anything like that so anyways we're gonna go ahead and take our needle down we've done that we've got our pin in place so that our fabric doesn't move and then we're gonna start uh, stitching so we're gonna go forward and back most machines have a little lever like this one at the, up at the top so that you can go ahead and go backwards and stitch backwards so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it going I'm gonna end it up right about there. I've reinforced it, I've lifted my presser foot up and I've pulled my needle up and now we can pull our fabric away from our machine and we go ahead and we trim our excess thread. So let's go ahead and do the other three corners and then we'll stitch up the sides. Okay guys, so we've sewn our flaps here along the edges where we have our magnetic snaps now it's time to close this baby up we're going to snap it together and instead of uh sewing from basically like from the inside part we're going to go ahead and just straight stitch from the outside so that our finished product will look you know nice and neat it doesn't matter what the inside looks like because again nobody's really going to see that so we're going to take our placemat and I'm actually going to start from the bottom up and the reason why is because of the bulkiness here of the two uh, sides meeting together so we're going to go from the very bottom and we're going to align our placemat to the edge there of our stitch that's already existing we're going to bring our needle down and we're going to reinforce it by going back and front back and forward we're going to take it back and then we're going to bring it forward and again we just try to stay in a straight line okay so we're going to go ahead and take our stitch uh, straight down the side here following the existing stitch from the placemat i'm going to reinforce it by taking it back and then just following our stitch all the way to the part where we get right below or right before uh, where that flap folds over I'm gonna reinforce that part, pull my needle out, cut the excess thread, and we're gonna do the very same thing right alongside, since it has the two running stitches there along each side of our placemat, AKA our clutch. So same thing, we're gonna bring the needle down, make sure it's fully uh, down through the fabric, take it forward, it forward and back to reinforce when the fabric is bulky like that it can get stuck on you but no worries you can just keep going so we're gonna take our stitch all the way up to right below that flap pull up on your lever here your presser foot cut the excess thread and now we have closed up our one side of our clutch. We're gonna do the same thing here on this side. We're gonna take it from the bottom, I'm flipping it over, taking it from the bottom, bringing our needle down, start stitching, take it back, and just push. This fabric is pretty thick and bulky, so you definitely want to guide it you want to help it by pushing it along so that you can continue uh, sewing we're gonna stop right below and we're gonna reinforce pull it up cut the thread we'll fix that in a second and then we're gonna do the last row of stitching Woohoo! we're almost done so same thing, we're gonna bring the needle down, help our fabric along here, take it back to reinforce it, and I'm like physically trying to push the fabric through so that my needle and my uh, presser foot will keep moving. We're taking it to right at the edge, we're reinforcing, pull up our presser foot, and now we are done so the next time you see the clutch i will actually have it 
on me. You'll see how I wear it. And now you've completed your first little clutch. It's nice and simple. See, it's closed up all the way. The top parts, again, I've chosen to leave open. This is it. This is your placemat that's turned into a clutch that you can use. You can put in your cell phone, your keys, your lip gloss, anything that you'd like to carry. Okay guys, so just a little bonus, uh, then this is optional. So I, like I said earlier, since I can be a little extra sometimes, um, I like things that are glittery or shimmery. I know you can't tell by my nail polish. <laughs> But I love to add, you know, a little bit of accents um, here and there. So I've decided to take a little bit of gold. It's just gold regular acrylic paint, mixed it with a little bit of the yellow. And then I've got some of the glitter 3D paint and that's fabric paint. And I'm gonna see about adding the glitter maybe to the very end. But I'm basically just taking little parts of my fabric here, my clutch, and I'm gonna add wherever I would feel that it needs, you know, little hints of gold. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's just basically me being, you know, artistic and creative. And that's kind of the look that I'm going for. And once it's dry, it'll look a little better, but that's just basically the last little bits uh, that I wanted to touch on my, my little clutch here. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Um, again, this last step is optional. Um, I hope that you found this video easy to follow along. This is my first video, woo -hoo! So please uh, like or you know hit subscribe and like my video. And if you have any comments, make sure that you leave those down below. Again, this is Claudia from Chamo Designs. Thanks again for watching. All right guys, so we've got our finished product. We've got our placement that we turned into a clutch. Inside, I'm holding my ID my phone, and my shades. Thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Remember, you too can design and create your happy place. Till next time.